my job to also support the motion um, as I to us, but from a slightly different perspective. Um, I start uh, with an image of Frank Huber, uh, which I just absolutely already talked about. And actually, it occurred to me that the important thing that we really need to get across is that good places and good planning uh, can stem, can facilitate um, effective tall buildings. So, in other words, what I'm going to talk about is the idea that good planning and conservation are actually mechanisms through which we can create good places. Tall buildings can be part of that, they can contribute to an ability to a sense of place, to character, to distinctiveness. Equally, they can't. Um, and I hope to give you some examples of where that's been successful so that we can take that into the debate and think about how that might affect London and some of the other big cities in the UK. I choose this slide of Vancouver really, um, it's a bit of a poster child for urbanism, but it is a poster child for very good reasons. Um, Vancouverism, as the uh, word goes, um, has a number of attributes which I think we're missing um, in this country, certainly. Um, not only are there slender towers, which you can see on the image, image there, at very high density in the central area, but they're combined with a mixed use. So in other words, there's a very thoughtful process gone through where the city fathers, um, the planners, think about what uses take place at the ground floor, the level of density, what happens above the ground floor. So that mixed use is really important. That's also combined with public spaces. They're very, very important. And when I say public, I mean public. I don't mean private spaces that are sold uh, to the city council under the rubric of them being public and actual uh, access by citizens controlled. I mean really public. Um, small parks litter the centre of the city, so even though the density in Vancouver is very high, actually there's a lot of open space for families and people to access. Not only is the centre of Vancouver very pedestrian friendly, I would actually say that the facades of the skyscrapers, um, as they hit the ground, are also pedestrian friendly. We're not talking about big glass walls inhibiting uh, people's movement or stopping them um, navigating or permeating their city. I'd also say as another good urban planning behaviour, actually what good planning does is it stops tall buildings from historically sensitive areas, or rather it should, and it certainly has done um, in Vancouver. I take that um, to the example of Paris, which I'm sure most of you know. Um, until very recently, the centre of Paris um, has been protected, the skyline has been protected, because of the significance and the distinctiveness of the character of the central city. And obviously, as a mega city like London, uh, there's been huge pressure for office development. And as you can see, uh, many of you have been there, La Défense to the northwest of the city has actually absorbed a lot of that pressure. So I would suggest that tall buildings in Paris have been able to contribute to the livability of Paris precisely because they've removed the pressure for office development. Um, like Canary Wharf, uh, this was a relatively sterile environment until relatively recently, so there are caveats. Uh, but certainly homes have started to be planted in La Défense and it's always been very well connected from a public transport perspective. Um, I also particularly like the way in which um, the planners and the city in Paris have used planning to create a very distinctive skyline, to link the historic skyline with the contemporary skyline. There is a relationship between those two elements which is very clear and very strong and is very readable to all of us. Um, and very recently, Bernard Delano, the, the, um, sorry, the mayor, thank you, um, was trying to have the preservation of the historic centre of the city lifted. Uh, luckily, he didn't have much success in that. So I would say that strong conservation and strong planning can both promote tall buildings and promote distinctiveness of place. Here we see an image of Melbourne, which I'm sure many of you uh, are familiar with. Melbourne, one of the most livable, high quality cities on earth, consistently elected as one of uh, the best cities to live in. It made me think, given that it's a very high rise city, and that image sorry, is somewhat distorted, um, what are the attributes, what are the elements which um, make Melbourne so livable? Um, certainly you'll be aware that the suburbs stretch for 50k around the centre of the city, so we're not certainly talking about the suburban areas. But in the central city there's been a, a very clear plan-led strategy to densify, to increase height and to increase the amount of activity in the central city, whilst also greening the city even more. So I would suggest that again, urban planning can lead to very good positive outcomes 
which draw from the heritage of this land to all of us. And Chicago, if we think about distinctive, distinctiveness of place, is also an interesting example of a city that was basically the birthplace of the skyscraper, but actually has taken the skyscraper typology and moved it forwards. It uses its great pattern to intelligently, I would suggest, um, build high to a very high density. Uh, Chicago, unusually for a North American city, has a very robust public transport network. It specifically has attempted to densify even more highly around those nodes in recent times. There is a caveat to that as well, though, um, and I raise this an issue. Um, Ed's already mentioned this, and I'm sure the other two speakers uh, will have a view. But actually, places like New York and Chicago, the birthplace of the skyscraper, are under threat as well from this latest wave of skyscrapers. Ones that have been built by, uh, proposed by people like Donald Trump, where the dollar actually is the defining feature of the character of those new buildings. So I think we should be concerned, and we shouldn't let the rest of our laurels. Um, I chose a picture of beautiful San Francisco specifically to underline all of these points. Um, so San Francisco, which I hope many of you have the chance to think of, I would say is one of the world's most beautiful cities. It seems to combine the character of the European city um, and the freedom of the European city with the North American logic of urban planning. Um, and actually San Francisco, very interestingly, has used skyscrapers in appropriate places to underscore the character of the city, to improve it, to enhance it even. And I would suggest that its own design strategy, which is available online if you look at to take a look, is actually a really interesting mechanism through which uh, the city councillors use tall buildings to accentuate the morphology, the topography of the city. It's enhanced the hills. It's allowed the character of the neighbourhoods to remain. I would also say, and this is very important for us in the UK, specifically in London, that actually those strategies have attracted consensus amongst a wide range of stakeholders. And I think that is absolutely crucial. It's not appropriate in a well-designed place, which is distinctive and popular with citizens, for big business to be calling the shots. The city council, the citizenry, neighbourhoods can also call the shots, and dialogue is important. It also, very briefly, recognises the cumulative impact of skyscrapers, and that is a debate which is suddenly lacking um, in this country, particularly in relation to character, but also specifically in relation to environmental impacts, climatic, etc. So I end on this slide. Um, I propose that tall buildings can contribute to creating livability of place if they've addressed the issues that I've raised. But my warning is this slide. Um, this is always very dangerous to challenge an audience, but I suggest, does anybody know where this is? Um, somebody's going to tell me straight away. No. So uh, left out my own to <laughs> I show you this picture of South Island because I would suggest the uncontrolled allowance of skyscraper development can utterly and completely not only destroy a sense of place, can take away the distinctiveness of the city, but which actually leads to a form of placelessness.